All right, the uh, First Presbyterian Church sound room staff have informed me that the camera is uh, up and running. And so I'd like to invite all who are viewing uh, to share in our time in God's Word and to encourage um, uh, at this time to uh, invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. Almighty God, in these challenging times, we trust in you. Uh, may your spirit empower us to do that as best as we can, given our unique situations in our homes, in our workplaces, in our lives. Uh, Lord, we do ask your blessings of health and protection of life. We just pray not only for First Presbyterian Church, but your church everywhere to grow through these uh, times of testing that have come our way. And Lord, uh, throughout the world, may you extend your hand to protect and preserve life and grant uh, health and safety. And we pray for the uh, scientists and the lab workers that they would uh, be able to find a vaccine and that it would be brought uh, to the crisis uh, as uh, quickly as possible. So for all these things, and especially for you, Lord God Almighty, and your word, we give thanks, praying in Jesus' name, who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. So I want to uh, encourage uh, a time of uh, worship, and uh, part of worship, as uh, many of us know, uh, involves being uh, faithful stewards of God's resources. And the Bible teaches us all to worship and serve the Lord as he has blessed us to be a blessing. And this involves managing our time, talents, and treasures. And so just an encouragement to those who contribute to the life and uh, the various ministries of uh, First Presbyterian Church to reach out to all ages and uh, stages of the members of the church that we might fulfill our vision, learning to live God's love in community. And uh, scripture teaches us to uh, worship the Lord, not only in our uh, activity, in ministry, but through our stewardship of our resources. Back in Jesus' day, people would use their outer garments when they went to the market, and they would make a fold in the garment and uh, pay for wheat or olives or whatever they were buying in the marketplace, and then carry their groceries home in their lap, in, their, in the fold of their outer garment. I share that just uh, because of what Jesus said. Jesus said, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, it will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, so it will be measured to you. So I encourage uh, even though we can't gather in the sanctuary uh, on a Sunday or meet in groups in the church, we can still uh, support and contribute to the many ministries of First Presbyterian Church. And God bless you as you do so. Today's sermon scripture is taken from one of the letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in uh, a city called Thessaloniki. It's uh, actually a modern-day city in Greece. Uh, lots of people visit and live there. And, and I'm reading now from the first letter to the Thessalonians from the Apostle Paul, beginning in chapter 3, and then we'll continue at the end of chapter 5. And please join me as we uh, listen to God's Word together. So, when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. But we sent Timothy, who is our brother and God's fellow worker, in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by various trials. You know quite well that we were destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. It turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, 
I sent to find out about you and your faith. For I was afraid that in some way the tempter might have tempted you and that our efforts might have been useless. And continuing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Therefore, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. And may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Thanks be to God for God's word to God's people in all times and places. This letter that Paul wrote to uh, the church in the city of uh, Thessaloniki was uh, sent to a group of people that he had met, that he had uh, ministered to. He preached the gospel there, helped the church get going with his, uh, his team of uh, church planters. And he uh, wrote to encourage them in their time of testing and even persecution. Thinking about what's happening in our day and age, and not only in our uh, city of Montrose, but throughout Colorado, the United States, and the world, if anyone had, uh, in a conversation with me, just even a number of weeks ago, said, made some mention about quarantine, I probably would have thought about some far away, remote area of the world where a virus broke out, but that it would be contained locally and that uh, teams of relief and uh, medical personnel would go and, and take care of the problem and uh, wouldn't really think about it spreading all over the world. But COVID-19 is not like that. And as we all know, it is a global uh, pandemic and it's testing and affecting the entire global population. We know about school closings. Some in different parts of the country uh, are closed for the rest of the year. Uh, we know about businesses closing and stores and uh, restaurants, even though there is uh, some takeout and drive-through uh, possibilities depending on uh, the restaurant. And of course, just like First Presbyterian Church here in Montrose, churches all over the world are closed, not uh, able to gather and have larger group uh, gatherings so that people can keep safe social distances. I mention this not because I don't think you're aware of them, because I'm sure you are. In fact, many of you are, are painfully aware of what's happening some are not able to work, uh, some uh, may not be able to have as much money to pay the bills, uh, things are different. Uh, all kinds of cancellations are taking place. These are tough times. When we think about what's happening, we are tempted to feel that we're powerless. Sometimes uh, we experience a high level of anxiety, fear, stress, and this, of course, impacts our emotional, psychological, mental, uh, and even physical uh, uh, part of ourselves. And so I think it's important to, uh, particularly as believers in Jesus Christ, to, to use what God has given us to stay focused on God, to allow the peace of Jesus Christ to guard our hearts, uh, to uh, cast out the anxiety and the fear and the worry uh, through the love of God, which the scripture says, uh, the love of God uh, casts out all fear. 
People say things like, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Uh, this is not a uh, minor, um, temporary blip on the radar screen. We're told that the COVID virus, COVID-19 virus, might continue into the uh, through spring and into the summer months, and we really just don't know how long. Paul's words written to the church at Thessaloniki go a lot deeper than just popular quotes about being tough and making lemonade. Paul's words have to do with our relationship with the living God and how it is that God's resources, God's presence, God's power, the hope and the joy and the peace that we know we can experience through faith in Christ. All these resources are available to each and every one of God's children in all times and all places, no matter what we're going through and whether we contract the virus or not, uh, whether we uh, have the same kind of lifestyle that we've been enjoying or not, we can experience God's joy and God's peace through faith in Jesus Christ. When we are tested, when life becomes frustrating, when we feel alone, we can still give thanks. As was just read, give thanks in all things, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. When COVID-19 comes close, and your faith is tested, we can thank God for God's love for us and God's presence with us and God's promise to bless us and to care for us and to provide for us. When our hearts and our minds are troubled and anxious and fearful, we can express gratitude to God and demonstrate faith in God by thanking God for the blessings that we do have and that we enjoy. In spite of COVID-19, nothing can keep you from experiencing the blessing of having, as someone said, an attitude of gratitude. And I wanted to emphasize this in today's sermon because giving thanks does something. Whenever we identify something that is good, something that comes to us from uh, another person, from God, from uh, society around us, and we focus on that, what happens? Well, what happens is we stop focusing merely on ourselves. Not that that's wrong. Uh, we have to look at ourselves and take care of ourselves. Uh, we have to wash our hands. We have to keep safe social distances. But when we look at what's happening around us and we see the hand of God touching us and blessing us, and we think about the gospel, the good news that Jesus loves us and gave himself for us, dying for us through a cruel execution, uh, being crucified on the cross, buried, but rising from the dead to prove that he conquers death, that he has paid for all our sins, that he loves us so much that he didn't even withhold his own life from us, but gave himself freely for us and for our salvation. When we can think about what God has done for us, what God is doing for us, what God promises to do for us, when that attitude of gratitude begins to permeate our minds and our thoughts and our lifestyle, we can experience God's blessings. The power of the gospel is life-changing. Paul wrote to the Romans saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation for those who believe in Jesus Christ. That word we call power is the Greek word dynamis, which means 
something that has explosive, life-changing power. Our word dynamite comes from that Greek word. The gospel is God's power to change us, to change our attitudes, to dispel our fears, our anxieties, our worries, and to give us hope and to give us a deeper faith that God, as it says in the book of Romans, God works all things together for good for those who love him and who are called according to his purposes. This theme of encouraging gratitude was common in St. Paul's letters. In the letter he sent to the church in Corinth, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he wrote, I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way. Paul was thankful for his fellow believers because he could see God's work, God's provision, God's blessing, God's love working in their lives. Paul himself uh, suffered for his faith. Uh, he writes about this in different letters and uh, talked about being uh, shipwrecked. And uh, after a storm, he was in the open sea for days, fearing for his life. He talked about being uh, arrested and punished by Roman soldiers. Uh, he talked about being imprisoned. And ultimately, Paul was uh, condemned uh, and executed for his faith in Jesus Christ. But I want to share a couple more verses that he wrote in some of his letters to different churches. For example, in the letter to the church in Ephesus, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, he said, Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to the church in Colossae, in Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 17, And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. Well, it's certainly easy for a pastor sitting behind his desk, telling people out there in the world, in the midst of a pandemic, to be thankful. That's the easy part. The hard part is living it and doing it. And today, I want to take this occasion to thank all of you at First Presbyterian Church for the way you continue to serve the Lord in and through the various ministries of the church, for the way you pray for the church, for all its ministries, and for the way that you support the church through your time and talents and your treasures. I thank God for you, and I pray that God will continue to bless you and encourage you and protect you and strengthen you in these difficult times, even though I can't see you face to face and do that in a personal way. I thought about something as a means for application to take the sermon a couple of steps further, and Here's an idea that came to mind. You might think it's a good idea. You might try it at home. Uh, I, I hope you do. What I encourage you to do is, on a piece of paper, uh, write three uh, circles, uh, concentric, and then the smallest one in the middle, uh, I want you to write some words that express what God has done for you for which you're thankful for. So in terms of giving thanks in all things, uh, giving thanks no matter what, uh, what has God done for you? What can you thank God for in your life? And then in the uh, next uh, circle, and let me just grab a Sharpie here and do this. So three concentric circles. You'll uh, immediately observe that I'm not the best artist in the world. Uh, so having written in this circle things that God has done for you, 
forgiveness, salvation, health. Go to the next circle and write what others have done for you for which you are thankful. Uh, it could be something a friend or a parent or a spouse uh, has done uh, for you, a family member. And then finally, in the larger, bigger circle, uh, I want you to think about, consider, and, and then write down things that uh, we are blessed by uh, in a general sense. Uh, health, uh, the security that we have and the safety that we enjoy living in a country like the United States of America, or the beauty of creation that we enjoy living in a, a beautiful state like Colorado, things like that, more general things in this last uh, biggest, uh, the third biggest circle, uh, the middle circle of things that uh, family members, friends, a spouse have done for you for which you can be thankful, and then uh, by way of reminder in the middle circle, some things that God has done for you for which you are particularly thankful for. I want to close by sharing something uh, that happened to me years ago. Uh, this was uh, during the uh, time of the uh, Cold War in uh, Central Europe and Eastern European countries. I worked for a seminary called Eastern European Seminary that was part of a ministry called uh, Biblical Education by Extension, uh, B, B E E World. And as a faculty member, I would join other uh, uh, faculty members traveling into different Eastern European countries. At the time, they were under communist control. And we would travel and meet with uh, college students, uh, church leaders, pastors, and because they couldn't obtain certain books and materials uh, necessary for uh, being equipped to have ministries and churches, we endeavored to provide that for them. And here's what I wanted to mention about that. I will never forget how whenever we went to a pastor's uh, home, and typically we met in homes, um, uh, association with foreigners and, and uh, having uh, times like that of training uh, were not allowed by the government. Uh, but meeting with somebody in their home was okay. At any rate, uh, I'll never forget knowing that because of the economic limitations and their financial limitations that these believers sometimes couldn't even afford to go out and buy groceries, they would nonetheless feed us and give us whatever they had. It was a custom, it was their uh, tradition to be hospitable to foreigners. When we uh, gave them books to read, books um, about how to study the Bible, or books about uh, theology, or even Bibles themselves, they would take those books. And I've seen grown men, tough guys, uh, with tears in their eyes, having received a Bible or a book like like one of mine that you see on the shelves behind me. And I recalled that this, uh, this last week, thinking about our sermon today, that when we, when we focus on the Lord and what God is about and who God is and what God is doing in and through our lives, the incidental, the more supplemental things end up being viewed in the right way. And the more important things come to the fore. And those believers, those church leaders, those church volunteers impressed me that they were thankful for their relationship with God, for the Word of God, and for the ability to teach and train and minister and serve others. And uh, I share that not to uh, uh, make you feel guilty or inferior because we don't live in those same kinds of circumstances. But I share that because I want to remind all of the believers right here at First Presbyterian Church Montrose that no matter what is going on around us, no matter how different ones of us react and respond, what we say, what we 
may feel is the right thing to do or not. No matter what, in all things, we can give thanks to God because this is God's will for you, for me, for all God's children in Christ Jesus. Please allow me to pray for me as we wrap up this time in God's word. Almighty, ever-living, holy, gracious, and loving God, we thank you that in spite of what's going on around us in our world, you remain our Father, you remain compassionate and loving, and you remain with us. And with your presence comes your joy, your strength, your peace. And Lord, we pray that you would so touch us and work in our hearts and lives that we would be people who are characterized by having an attitude of gratitude, of being grateful to God for the many, many blessings that are ours through faith in Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we trust you to bless each and every one in our lives, in our family, in our church, uh, in our region and state and country and world. And Lord, we pray that again, you extend your hand to bring healing uh, wherever it is needed. And so in spite of the tests and the difficulties and challenges and trials that we are experiencing, we thank you, Lord, for your great love for us. And we give thanks in the name of Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself fully for us and for our salvation. Amen. God bless you, and thank you for sharing this time together in God's Word.